Hi, everybody. As the economy slowly opened up and we have started to live with the pandemic and traveling has started to resume progressively and more and more countries have been opening to accept uh, tourists to come in. So today I'm going to share with you three Singapore stocks that are positioned for the recovery play and with dividend focus in mind. The first stocks I'm going to share with you is called Comfort Delgro. And Comfort Delgro always give people a misconception of equal to taxis. In fact, Comfort Delgro is one of the largest land transport company in the world. It operates in six countries and have a global network of about 40,000 buses, taxi, train, and rental vehicles. So this is what Comfort Delgro actually is. Comfort Delgro have released their FY2021 result in February and they have made a full year revenue of 3.5 billion. But one thing that catch the eye of many people is they have managed to went back into the black with an operating profit of 125.4 million compared to a full year operating loss of 47.6 million on FY2020. On top of that is without the government support they make a profit of 210 million. So you can see the company that will start to recover. And when uh, Singapore start to open up, I will foresee that their revenue and profit should go even higher. So let's look at some of the numbers. This is the income statement for FY2021 and 2020. The revenue actually is only increased by 9.1%. But we look at the operating profit for FY2021 is 125.4 million. And this is without government subsidies. Compared to FY2020, which is actually a loss of 47.6 million. So it's an increase of 363% for the operating profit. Of course, with government subsidies, their profits is even higher. And let's look at where is our revenue and profit. So Singapore is still the major contributor for Comfort Delgo revenue, which contributes more than 50%, and followed by UK, Ireland, and Australia. China, Malaysia, and Vietnam actually contribute very little. And Vietnam, they have ceased their operation. Already, so we may not see Vietnam for FY2022. Let's look at the operating profit. Singapore still contribute more than 50%. UK, although they have contributed a huge amount to company algo revenue, their profit is insignificant compared to even China. And FY2022, they are still suffering losses. So with the opening up of the economy, and we're living with endemic, we hope that UK profit were able to catch up and this will benefit the company as a group. This is a segment breakdown. The public transport services contribute close to 80% of the total revenue for company while the taxi is only contributing about 12%. And talk about profit, the public transport services, we include the bus and rear, is more than 60% of the bottom line to the company, while the taxi contribution is only less than 10%. This is the past five-year financial statement for Comfort Delgro. So although for FY2021, we can see that they managed to go into the black and they managed to make a very good increase in their income compared to FY2020, we are getting from the bottom up. And thus, although there is a 130 million net income profit, but we need to compare it before pre-pandemic level, which is over around 300 million. So it means that there is still more than 100% for Comfort Delgo income to grow. And their revenue actually have dropped about 10%. So going forward, we expect that income to Avers will slowly catch up. And that will be very positive news for the share price of Comfort Delgo. And let's look at their balance sheet. One thing I like about Comfort Delgo is their cash. Their cash holding actually have been even higher compared to pre-pandemic level, which over around close slightly less than 600 million. And with this so much cash, you look at their total current liabilities about 990 million. They will not have any debt servicing issues or like paying out liability issues in the near term. And with such a good cash holding, I think they should be able to operate a bit better during the recovery phase. For cash flow statement, you can see that their free cash flow is very healthy and even more healthier than 
before the pre-pandemic level. Their return on equity pre-pandemic is more than 10%. And this is one of the criteria I look for a company, which I prefer double digit for their ROE. And now it's only about 4.89%. And we are still not out of the wood yet. So that means that it's still a lot of growth potential or a lot of recovery potential for company that will go on that. And this is their gross gearing, their gross level of equity, which in fact it is very, very low for the business of their size. And it's a business that has a lot of assets and their gearing is only 12.7%. This means that Comfort Delgo can tap into the debt market to go and acquire company for them to further grow. Next, when I talk about recovery play, we also talk about dividends. So this is the dividend trend for Comfort Delgo for FY2014 to 2021. Before pandemic, we can see that their dividend actually is increasing. Their payout ratio is also increasing at the same time. So the dividend growth actually is due to increase in payout ratios. Uh, however, it's still up to 75% before they start to have a drop in their dividend due to the impact from the pandemic. It's still pretty healthy for the company. And what I'm looking forward to is company that will pay out at least 50% of their income as dividend. We noticed that for FY2020, we see that worst case, they still managed able to pay out 0.0143 cents of dividend. And yet increased to 0.42 cent, which have a payout ratio of 70%. Imagine when they were to recover their revenue to increase their profit or to increase, if they just maintain this payout ratio, we expect their dividend to be even higher. And this will definitely be a positive thing for the share price. But of course, we will not expect they to recover back to more than 10 cents before the pre-pending level in the near term. But it may take a few years for them. Uh, however, we are looking at a dividend play for a longer term. And you want to invest in a company that their dividend is expected will be increasing over the next few years. Let's look at their fire chart. The highest comfort that growth has hit is $2.90 before it comes crashing down to $1.33. And it managed to recover, but it comes down again due to the start stop of the circuit breaker. And currently it's over around $1.48. And let's zoom in further to look at the daily chart. Currently, they are testing the 200 MA, which is a very strong resistance for Comfort Delgo. If they manage to stand above the 200 MA, then we may proceed that Comfort Delgo share price may have more upside going forward. The second counter I'm going to share with you is called SETS. We have post a third quarter pet me of 5.1 million, which actually is slightly lower than their second quarter, which is 6.8 million. If you less off their government relief, SETS is still suffering 33 million losses. One consolidation is their revenue have grown by 22.6% year on year. As last year, the VTL lane has started and people have started to travel. So this is one thing that we will foresee. That is a good counter to position for recovery play. Let's look at the nine month FY2022 Q on Q operating statistics. And you can see that practically everything is double digit and high double digit. Don't be too happy as we are from the low base up task any slight increase, the percentage increase will be very high. Uh, but it's a positive sign to show that the company, the worst is really over for this company. Flight handling up by 39.4, meal serving 22.1, passenger handle 75.2, cargo tonnage 55.7. The manpower, the employee have dropped by 2.4. They practically got two main source of revenue. One is called a food solution and the other one called a gateway services. The food solution contribute more than 50%, while the gateway contribute slightly less than 50%. Uh, however, food solution is still suffering losses of 42.8 million, while the gateway services have been make a profit of 45.1 million. Uh, compared to 2021, the losses for the food solution have reduced by around 50%. And the gateway services have turned from losses to profit. This is one good sign of this company that is positioned for recovery play. This is a further breakdown of their segment. A lot of people always think that SAS is always related to airport services, but their food solution, they have managed to try to diversify from the airline food catering to more towards the non-travel related. Their non-travel revenue actually is 45%. Compared to the travel revenue, it's 54.2. And this non-travel revenue is mainly due from their food solution, where they start to set up central kitchen overseas, or even in Singapore, to cater for non-airline foods. And they are still very heavily depend on Singapore 
for their revenue. Task is even easier to monitor when you see the traffic, the Chinese airport passenger size increase in Singapore. We'll know that you definitely directly benefit this company sets. Let's zoom in to look at their fire chart. Their revenue have actually dropped drastically, close to 50% before the pandemic level. And of course, their income have also suffered a losses for FY2021. Sets is a bit different from ComfortDelGo, which a return profit set is currently still suffering losses. With the expected exponential growth of air travel traffic, I would expect the growth recovery of sets to be pretty fast in the next few quarter. As more and more people are traveling and the passengers number in Changi Airport will increase over time. Their cash flow is still positive, although it is still lesser than pre-pandemic level. Uh, one thing to think about pre-pandemic, their return on equity is actually very healthy, which is overall 15 to 16%, and currently they are suffering losses. So with the opening, I will expect their return on equity will be able to normalize, but it may take about three years for them to really normalize to that level. And this will mean that it's a counter that you may want to position for recovery over the slightly longer term, like three to five years. This is their dividend chart for the past seven years. Sets dividend have been increasing year on year before the pandemic with their payout ratio pretty stable around 80%. It's a bit different from company Delco where their dividend have been increasing, but their payout ratio have also been increasing. Although sets have made a profit, but that is to get with government subsidies. But the management will not be paying dividend in the near term as they don't feel it's right to pay out dividend using government money. The company will only pay dividend when they turn profitable, less of government subsidies. And when that time comes, which I will foresee to be pretty soon in the near term, and that will be very positive for the company. If the company starts to announce, I'm going to start paying out dividends to the shareholders. And let's look at what will directly impact sets. This is the air traffic statistics. This is gathered from the Changi Airport Group. The passengers for February 2022 is 700,000 passengers. And yet today is 1.4 million. Is this number big? We need to compare before pandemic. Let's look at 2018 and 2019. The number of passenger movement in Changi Airport is more than 60 million. And before the circuit breaker coming, before the lockdown coming, it's about 11 million. After that, we are in a lockdown mode. And for 2021, the passenger is only 3 million. And this is mainly towards the last quarter of 2021, where BTL lanes start to open up. And this is as of February. You can see that it's already 1.4 million for two months, which is about half of 2021 traffic ID. So there is a long way to catch up to pre pending level of 60 million. And this also means a lot of growth potential for this SaaS company in terms of revenues and income. We will going back to the 2018, 2019 period. All in all, it may take three years for them to really go into that level. And next is SaaS is also try to diversify business and by not just relying on the airports and also the cruise line, they also start to go into the food services that is non-travel related, where they also start, for example, they have just started to invest 150 million in a food production automation project in the Zurong Innovation District. And also they have started to set up central kitchen in overseas to cater for the non-travel related business. So this will be another engine of growth for sets going forward. Now look at their five-year weekly charge share price. The worst actually is very over for sets where they managed to start to go up. And based on Willy chart, they are now standing around the 200 MA line, which means they are trying to turn bullish and going on the path for recovery. Let's look at their daily chart. They have managed to break across the 200 MA line. And actually, there's a golden cross that formed between the 50 and the 200 MA. However, it is deviated too much away from the 50 MA there may be a pullback in the near term and this is where you may want to monitor these stocks going forward the last recovery stocks with dividend play in mind that i'm going to talk about is called Genting singapore do take note it's not Genting hong kong we run into financial issues we are talking about Genting singapore Genting have announced their result where their second half profit have dropped by 49 percent but we are still not out of the wood yet. This is their full year financial statement. Their revenue have not much changes, but their net profit has increased by more than 100%. Let's look at their past fire results. The revenue have dropped more than 50% compared to 
compared to pre-pandemic level. However, their gross income have dropped more close to 80%. This is because the cost of goods sold and green depreciation and amortization, certain fixed cost is there. And this one can't drop too much. And this affects their bottom line where there is a big drop in income where the income actually have dropped more than 90% and actually have grew back a part of it. But they are still far away from their income before the pandemic. One thing that is very good about Genting is their cash in their bank, where they have $3.3 billion of cash. And we look at their liabilities, only less than $1 billion. Thus, you can consider Genting as a debt-free company, which also means that they are able to take on more debt for them to continue to grow if they want to. However, the negative side is their cash flow is negative. Although there's a lot of money in the bank, but their free cash flow is negative for FY2021. This may not be that alarming as they got three over billion of cash sitting in the bank. One thing may not be so ideal for Genting is before the pandemic, their ROE slightly less than 10%. And their current ROE definitely is very low. So if they were to go back to the pre-pandemic level, there is still certain growth potential. To me, it will be a company more towards a recovery play. But when you want to hold for longer term, we may need to look further. And their dividend have dropped drastically from $0.04 cent to $0.01. Cent. And with the recovery coming in, we expect that dividend to able to restore back, to normalize back. And this will be a catalyst for the share price to move up. And Genting have actually started to embark on their expansion in the second quarter, which actually have come to a halt due to the COVID-19. Their 4.5 billion mega expansion on their reserve world Sendosa will start in second quarter this year, which is actually now. This will involve doing work on their Universal Studio, their Sea Aquarium, and also repurpose their hotels and their convention center to anticipate recovering tourism and hospitality sector. This is a positive news for Genting. But however, when you dissect further, we need to take note of this. Where is the revenue source for Genting? 80% of their revenue are actually from gaming. The non-gaming is only contributed about 20%. The non-gaming, including the Sea Aquarium, including the Universal Studio and the hotel room, all this, it only contributed about 20%. So when Genting go on the expansion on their hotel room, on their attraction side, ultimately they still need to increase their revenue on their gaming, where their prestige client need to come back to Genting and go to the casino. And then that will really help Genting to grow further. So this is one part we need to focus on is their gaming business. Will it continue to grow higher when the economy recover? Let's look at the weekly chart. For Genting, the weekly chart is they are still on the very side where they have not really crossed back the 200 MA, but the daily charts are re recovered and we can see a golden cross may be going to form soon. So in the near term, it is possible for Genting currently, but in the longer term, we still need to monitor further. So these are the three recovery stocks with a even play focus in mind that I've shared with you today, Comfort Delgo, SAS and Genting Singapore. Do remember to do your own due diligence analysis before you make any investment decisions. That's all I have to share with you today. And if you feel that you have benefit from this video, do remember to like, share, and comment on that. And lastly, do remember to subscribe and press the notification button so that you'll be notified on my next video. I shall see you in my next video. Goodbye.